you saw my Gen 1 review, you'll know that I wasn't the biggest fan of the games or the Pokemon, so revisiting the region of Kanto for a second look wasn't exactly something I was dying to do. But today's games are a very important pair, so I'd be remiss not to give them at least a little look. So today we're taking a look at Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, the Gen 3 remakes of Red and Blue. You may be asking yourself why they're so important. Well, not only are they the first remakes in the franchise, but they were also essential titles at the time. They gave Gen 3 fans access to Gen 1 and Gen 2 Pokemon that were missing from those games, so they could complete the national decks. And for that reason they were must-haves at the time, and they're still seen as solid remakes to this day, because of a bunch of smaller additions and improvements this game carried over from Hoenn. But despite the game's reputation, I had my suspicions revisiting these games and playing through them for this review. I mean, you guys already know my opinion on the originals, and a remake can improve a game for sure, but... The original game is always a foundation that you must build upon, and when the foundation is bordering on being mediocre to begin with, there's only so much a remake can do. But I'm happy to report this remake does more than enough to warrant existing, and arguably replaces Red and Blue's the de facto Gen 1 experience. When it comes to story, Fire Red and Leaf Green don't really change much at all. If you're a diehard Gen 1 -er or new to Kanto, you don't have to worry about getting a watered down Gen 1 experience. It's still the same old Kanto plot with you playing as Red, collecting all the badges, and taking out Team Rocket. But this time, you're doing it with a fresh coat of paint, and what a fucking coat it is. Running off the Gen 3 engine with a similar graphical style, taking one look at the gameplay, it's obvious new life has been breathed into Kanto, and even though I don't usually care about graphics, this boost in graphical fidelity actually improves the gameplay in some respects. Areas like Silphcon and the Cinnabar Mansion are still as mundane as ever to navigate, but they're both made considerably easier to navigate, thanks to the more developed and striking Gen 3 style, as opposed to the colourless and confusing tile sets of Gen 1. I still think Kanto is a bland and borderline lifeless region, but I'd be lying if I said the improved graphics did make the game infinitely more enjoyable. Another thing that got an upgrade was the soundtrack. There's not too much to say here since they're the same title tracks we've heard a million times already, but they've definitely been elevated thanks to the GBA sound chip. The soundscape is much richer and more vibrant, more instruments have been added to certain tracks to fill out the mixes a little more and make the sometimes hollow sounding Kanto themes of old sound more complete. And while the songs still sound chip tuney, they still make for a fully developed and rich soundtrack, which is impressive considering the source material they had to work with. A lot of Gen 3's sonic cadences were carried over to this soundtrack, much like Gen 3's improvements to the gameplay. I'll always stand by Gen 1 being a bore to play, and part of that can be attributed to the barely existent battling mechanics, but thanks to Gen 2 and 3, the battling is made a lot more fun, thanks to the increased battling speed and the new mechanics. Other than mechanical and graphical changes, the only other addition was some post-game content in the form of the Sevi Islands. I'll be honest, I didn't bother doing much of the Sevi Islands because the only real thing of note going on in this area is a bit of plot centered around Team Rocket. And while it's neat and does help fill in the gaps between Giovanni's defeat and Team Rocket's eventual return, I couldn't give less of a shit about Team Rocket if I tried. You also have the Trainer Tower, which is fairly decent and a nice time sink, but it's nothing more than that. The Battle Frontier, this is not. Also, how could I forget about the introduction of Leaf? She's a female protagonist. She's cool. Enough said. Up until now, I've sung this game's praises to a degree, but this game isn't without its faults. Most of it can be chalked up to trying to preserve the original soul of Kanto, which probably wasn't the best idea because Kanto is inherently flawed and archaic. But there are others that can't really be justified, like the hand-holding, for example, because unlike the general flow of the Gen 1 story, said hand-holding wasn't in the original games. You have stuff like the TGTV and Oak teaching how to battle, which don't really need to exist in the game. I understand that the TGTV is optional, but it's still really patronising. Paired with the decreased difficulty, it all makes this game feel like baby's first Pokemon game. While it's not as bad as some future games, it still feels weird and annoying. It's almost like this remake was just a business decision. Just something to rope in new players. Which is plausible considering Gen 3 didn't sell as well as 1 or 2. These are obviously minor nitpicks, so I genuinely believe this is the definitive Gen 1 experience. You have zero reason to go back to the originals, because anything and everything you can experience in Gen 1, you can experience here in greater form. So if you're a new fan looking for a genuine Kanto experience, or a veteran looking to relive some nostalgic memories, this might just be your game.